I just got called in from home. So let me rewind a little bit. This is actually my seventh day straight. We are currently doing seven on seven off, like I said in my prior videos. So we work seven days on and have seven days off afterwards. The only problem with that is you split the whole week of call between two fellows. So me and my co-fellow, Clayton. So every other day we are on call. So essentially one day I'm not on call, then I'm on call for 24 hours and keep going. So I was on call Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, Sunday, up until Monday morning at 7 a.m. So every day since it's been essentially the same amount of work almost, but half of the staff, you have to kind of pick up the slack, which means I've worked pretty much 15 hour days plus every single day so far. And today is my seventh day. I left today about 5 p.m. I thought I was doing great thought I would get a good night's sleep hanging out with Andriana tonight but then I got a call at 8 p.m. and found out there was a patient bleeding at an outside hospital that was being transferred here and the hospital is probably two hours away from here transport takes forever and they didn't actually get here until midnight which is fine because you know it's about a two-hour case I get out of here at 2 a.m. and I don't have to go to work tomorrow so it's not that big of a deal I'm just a little tired and was hoping that I could enjoy my seventh day in a row and just relax, but such is life. So you guys wanted to see the terrible parts of residency. So this is pretty bad. Can't get much worse than being called in at midnight when you're almost done with your seven day straight stint. So one thing I failed to mention that while I was driving here, I got called by the ICU and they told me Great news that there is also another patient bleeding at a different outside hospital being transferred here emergently that we will likely have to investigate as well. So now I have two cases back to back. They probably won't start till about 1 a.m. or so. And hopefully I can get out of here before the sun comes up. So I'm sure you can see how tired I am currently. It's been a long week. My hair is getting longer by the day here. But anyways, I'm gonna go get changed. Watch me as I slowly get tired throughout the night. And what can you do? We signed up for it. All right, so it's about 15 minutes later. I got changed, as you can see. And what you all probably don't know because a lot of you all see the emergency stuff in TV shows, but there's this huge like waiting period. The whole game is hurry up and wait. These patients get transferred here. The ICU teams have to assess them in the unit. They have to either put a central line in, intubate them or whatnot, um, change their presser requirements, all that stuff, tune them up. Then they can transport them down here. So essentially I get here, I do all the waiting, do the note, look over the imaging, plan our way we're going to go about this procedure. And then once the patient gets down to our suite, then I will call the attending in and wake him up uh, to come in because they usually live pretty close by. So right now I'm just going over this. I'll look over the next patient and wait for this one to come down and we'll get started. All right, so it's now 12.45 a.m. and I'm still waiting for the patient to kind of get down here. I spoke to the ICU. They want to intubate the patient up there before they bring him down so that they're nice and stable for us. That way anesthesia can just take the reins when they're down here. So in the meantime, I figured I would show you the inside of an interventional radiology suite because I know you guys have seen pictures of it but don't really know what the heck all these things do. So I'll go ahead and show you this right now and at least you guys have an idea of what this stuff looks like. All right, so this is an interventional radiology suite. Super fancy and beautiful. Let me flip this camera around so you guys can see. 
All right, so first and foremost, we have our big C-arm. So this is actually turned sideways. It's usually centered like this. So that flat plate detector is up top over the patient. This is actually the part where the X-ray comes out of or the tube. It goes under the patient so that all the scatter goes down to the floor. This thing rotates on a hinge, as you can see right here. It can go pretty much anywhere. It has this fancy blue light at the bottom, which is adds a nice touch. So this is the main workhorse of the interventional suite right here. Next, we have the anesthesia machine over here in a little fix this system where we get all the medications. Well, I don't, but the nurses and the anesthesiologists get it. Then we have our table. Let me go extra wide here. So this is our table. We have a little mushroom tip right here. As I like to call it, it moves the table pretty much everywhere. This brings the C-arm all the way from there to the actual patient. Collimate. Whole bunch of buttons here that change a bajillion different things. This unit actually does a cone beam CT, which is basically a CT, but not as good of quality because it can't do the same thing that a normal CT scanner does. Um, we have a few fancy things here. We do, so the vascular team does a lot of aorta work in here, so we can get pretty, pretty fancy with our IVIS set up here. And then as you see right there on the big screen, we have one big screen over there and one big screen right here, which basically is where we see the x-ray. And the x-ray will take up this whole screen right here while we're doing the procedure. These move on a hinge as well. So as you can see, everything's pretty mobile. Then we have some OR lights so we can see what we're doing. And then we have all of the stock supplies, balloons, gowns, wires, catheters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And some random supplies here, another TV screen. And then this is the whole view of the interventional suite right here. So it's pretty cool. We have the best technology in medicine, but I'm not biased. Is This is the control room where we do all of the set up cone beam CT set up with a microphone and all that stuff. So yeah, this is where all the magic happens behind the scene. We have lead lined glass so you can watch the procedure without getting irradiated. Also, I know you guys are going to be in the comments saying that I don't ever show you what I actually do when I'm at the hospital, but that's because there's something called HIPAA and we have to respect patient privacy. So I can't show you all of the procedure or give you any information about the patients or procedure that I'm doing. So I have to keep it really general. But if I get time while making this video, I'll show you some examples of what I mean by bleeding and what we do in interventional radiology and how we fix that problem. All right, so one case is officially done. Uh, it was about two hours long. Well, didn't get started until pretty late, but we're done with the first one. We are checking the patient's labs for the second patient to bring down. Oh, by the way, it's 4 a.m. currently. So I've been up since 6.30. And so we're approaching 22 hours of being awake, compiled with seven days of minimal sleep total. So. Hanging in there, waiting on the next case currently. So we'll see how that goes. Also, since I won't be here tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go ahead and dictate that case because usually these difficult cases are long and uh, take a lot of time to dictate. So I'm going to do that now so that I don't have to do it later and forget everything I did. All right, so luckily we didn't end up doing that last case. Um, it's gonna have to be pushed until the morning and uh, yeah, 